wanted to talk to you about later. All right. That you may not three. be aware of. I have. I need to update you on one as well. well first chance we get with regard to the renaming of Big Chief. Yeah, okay, I'll, I'll give you. Uh, I'll, I'll give you a call after you. one. Okay. Fair enough. Okay. Thanks, Phil. So uh, I just want to make sure from a process point of view, I have a question on D13, the 3340 Carol online. How do I arrange to ask that question? You'll get prompted so, part way through. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Everything else is clear as a bell. <laughs> <laughs> For now. <laughs> All right, ready when you are. Sometimes okay, good morning, happen. everyone. I'd like to call the meeting to order. We'll have a moment of reflection, please. Thank you. Any disclosure of pecuniary interest? Okay, seeing none. Today, uh, good morning, we have three public meetings in accordance with the Planning Act. I am pleased to advise that this is being broadcast live on the Township's YouTube channel where recording of this meeting will be available. Notice of the meetings were sent by first class mail to all property owners within 120 meters, 400 feet, of the subject properties. Signage was also posted on the subject property to provide information about the applications. All of this was in conformance with the Planning Act process for a statutory public meeting. The purpose of the meetings are to inform and provide the public and council with an opportunity to ask questions or express views with respect to the proposals. The format of the public meeting will be as follows. One, the applicant's agent will generally explain the purpose and the effect of the applications. Two, second, township staff can provide further information and clarify any statements of the applicant and or their agent. Three, next, the public will be printed to ask questions and express views on the proposal. And then the public portion of the meeting will be closed. And four, lastly, members of council will be given the opportunity to ask questions for clarification on the proposal and provide comments. At the conclusion of the meeting for each application, the applicant, their agent, and if required township staff will be given the opportunity to respond to the questions and comments received. No decision will be made today following the public meeting on proposed zoning bylaw amendments. Following this meeting, the information obtained, including from questions and comments, comments submitted by members of public and council will assist township staff to determine next steps. The township is the approval authority for the proposed zoning bylaw amendments for which council may recommend the bylaws to be considered or ask for addi additional information prior to council's consideration. If in the future township council decides in favor of the application, members of the public will have provided oral or written submissions but disagree with the decisions may be entitled to appeal the decision to the Ontario Land Tribunal under the Planning Act. Individuals attending the public meeting, meetings by YouTube, Zoom, or telephone may email or call the Township's Planning Department to submit contact information to receive notice of decision on the applications. Okay, I now call on the agent, uh, applicant's agent, uh, Josh Morgan. I think we're gonna look at uh, D1, public meeting Z20-13, public meeting notice Z-20-13. Morning, Josh. Good morning, Mayor Burkett, or Mayor Burkett and uh, members of council. Um, so is staff going to give an overview or do you want me just to jump right into the uh, PowerPoint? Feel Looks free like to we'll have you go. Feel free to jump right in, Josh. Okay, that's great. All right, Allison, would you like me to share my screen or yes. would you like to flip? Yeah, okay. Yes, please. Okay. Bear with me, let me pop up my PowerPoint. Okay. All right. So uh, thanks for having me here today. Uh, Josh Morgan from Morgan Planning. 
I'm here today representing uh, the Strongman family, uh, Greg Strongman in particular, uh, relatively new owners of 3340 Carly Online. Uh, we're here today to discuss the zoning bylaw amendment application and uh, just in general terms, the purpose of the um, zoning bylaw amendment application is to permit um, uh, the use of a portion of an accessory building for Mr. Strongman's home industry, which is Strongman Custom Woodworking. Uh, and then there would be a couple of site-specific performance standards that we would be also seeking to uh, address through this rezoning process. Um, so just for a description of the land and pr probably what I'll do is flip to the next slide while I describe the land. Okay, so um, at 3340 Carly Online, as members of council I'm sure are aware, um, the, Carleon sits right in between Burnside to the west and Hampshire Mills to the east and the subject property uh, is just north of the corner of Carleon Line and Stockdale Road so it's on the west uh, the west side of Carleon Line. Um, the Strongmans uh, I think it was in May or June obtained a building permit uh, to construct uh, their home on the property. Uh, if you can see my cursor there's a sort of a, a cleared portion of the property and then there's a large uh, wooded portion of the property at the rear. So a building permit was issued in May or June um, to enable the Strongmans to begin constructing their, their house there. Um, and their intention is to then, once the house is complete, uh, move on to the construction of an accessory building or a garage. And uh, this application will seek to allow the Strongmans to operate their home industry, their woodworking business within the, within the garage. Um, so the, as you can see, the surrounding properties are mostly comprised of agricultural land, uh, rural land, uh, woodlands, and some, uh, some wetland areas. The, the property has approximately 635 meters of frontage on the Carleon line and an approximate area of 20 and a half hectares or about 50 acres. Um, as illustrated here on the, on the image, the south and west portion, mostly the west portion here of the property is heavily wooded and a portion of this part of the land is within the North Lake Swamp which is a provincially significant wetland. All of the development activities are proposed within the cleared area of the land here. All um, of the development activities are proposed uh, with more than a 120 meter setback to the limit of the provincially significant wetland and, and that's an important consideration from a planning policy perspective. Okay, so the purpose of the application. Uh, the purpose of the zoning bylaw amendment application is to rezone a portion of the property, a portion of the, the cleared area at the front of the property, um, from its current Greenland zone to a site specific Greenland exception zone. As I mentioned, the primary purpose of the Greenland exception zone is to permit Strongman Custom Woodworking to operate as a home industry within a portion of the accessory building or the garage. The Greenland uh, exception zone would also include special provisions related to the height of the building, 5.27 meters is the request, the size of the building, 297 square meters, which is 3,200 square feet, and also the amendment would seek to limit the area that could be used as for the home industry to 232 square meters. So. Um, this slide deck is actually a, a bit out of date. Um, but what, what it's helpful here is it illustrates the, the, basically the approximate area which we're proposing to rezone here. So again, we're not proposing to rezone the entire property. We're just proposing to rezone a portion of the, uh, the front cleared land. Um, when we had originally submitted our application, we were requesting to rezone from the Greenland zone to a rural residential exception zone. This parcel of land here, if you can see my cursor, is zoned rural residential. So we felt it was appropriate and based on the character of the cleared land to rezone to rural residential. Um, however, uh, planning staff felt that rezoning to the Greenland exception zone was more appropriate. So this slide reflects our original request, whereas staff is recommending that we don't go to a rural residential exception zone, rather we go to a Greenland zone. So I'm just trying to explain to you why this slide is not consistent with what we're now asking for. Um, these, this is just a, a, uh, an excerpt from the lot grading plan which is submitted in support of the building permit application and the building permit has, as I mentioned, been issued now for the house. 
So this is the frontage of Carleon driveway coming in along the south side. This is the dwelling here, septic bed. So the dwelling is under construction and the proposed accessory building is to the north of the dwelling in this area. Uh, as I mentioned, and as it's important from a planning policy perspective, there's a provincially significant wetland, if you can see my cursor kind of down in this area. I think it even stretches over here a little bit. Um, and so we were uh, needing to set the accessory building more than 120 meters from the limit of the wetland, which we have done. It's set back approximately, I think it was 131 or 135 meters. Had we chosen to uh, move forward with the accessory building closer than 120 meters from the provincially significant wetland, we would have needed to commission an environmental impact study. And we were, you know, quite honestly, uh, this area was totally uh, fine for the strongmans. They actually preferred this area for their uh, garage. And also it was nice to essentially not have to incur the expense of environmental impact study to build a garage in the middle of a field. So. Um, so we did not need to do an environmental impact study because we set the building so far back from the wetland. Um, this is just kind of a more of a close-up of the lock rating plan to illustrate the house. Uh, more of a close-up of the lock rating plan just to illustrate the um, proposed accessory building. Just a couple of excerpts from the first from the township zoning bylaw schedule. So the entire property is currently designated greenlands, even the field at the front here. Um, and as mentioned, our zoning amendment seeks to rezone to a site specific, rezone a portion of it anyway, to the site specific greenlands exception zone. And then um, most of the property is designated greenlands by the township's official plan, but um, the front portion of the property is designated rural. And when, many months ago now, I had discussions with the planning department about this kind of, this gray here denotes the rural designation. Um, and as members of council are aware, the official plan schedules are not perfect. Um, they're not a perfect reflection of what's happening on the ground. So when I spoke with the planning staff, they generally agreed that this rural land use designation was probably meant to incorporate this whole open field here because of course Greenlands is not meant to cover just vacant rural land. So it was generally agreed that this whole front portion of the property is uh, interpreted as being designated rural. Uh, so planning policy review now in terms of the County of Simcoe official plan, the entire property is designated Greenlands by the county's official plan. Um, residential dwellings and accessory buildings are permitted within the county's Greenlands designation. So no planning approvals were required from the county's perspective. Um, and on that basis, because you can build a dwelling, you can build an accessory building within the county's Greenlands designation, and the county's official plan also encourages home industries in appropriate locations. It's my opinion that the zoning bylaw amendment to rezone a portion of the property um, conforms with the intent and the general direction of the county's official plan. Uh, provincial policy, just like high level here, um, the, the PPS doesn't provide specific direction in terms of home industries, but it provides general guidance in terms of the types of land uses that we should be allowing and encouraging in rural areas. Um, so home occupations and home industries are permitted on rural lands. And again, these lands are designated rural by the township's official plan. Um, and the PPS provides some general direction that development um, needs to be compatible with the rural landscape and it needs to be sustained by rural service levels. So we have to think about whether this home industry, a garage with a woodworking shop within it with just one employee um, is compatible on this large lot with all of the adjacent properties. Um, and so when I was thinking about this, we think about, well, does it have any impacts on the neighbors? Is it loud? Is it noisy? Does it make, does it smell bad? I think the answer to all of those questions is no. Um, this is a one man operation here. Uh, in a, you know, all contained within a garage and all of the um, equipment and uh, materials for the woodworking business would be kept within the garage. So we're not looking at, you know, this sort of use expanding out into the fields and becoming an eyesore. That's not the intention. The intention is for it all to be inside. And of course, as a woodworking business, you need to keep the wood inside because you need to keep it dry and you need to take care of it. So I believe that this application would maintain sort of compatibility with the rural 
surroundings and on that basis um, I think the uh, zoning bylaw amendment um, is consistent with the policies of the provincial policy statement. Uh, the growth plan similarly um, provides us with some general language about encouraging uses that are sort of compatible in rural areas, um, not expanding uses such as home industries into natural heritage features, wetlands, woodlands, etc., mineral aggregate operations, and um, you know this property or this location of the garage. Again, it's in the middle of a field. It's more than 120 meters away from the nearest natural heritage feature. Um, there are no mineral aggregate resources on the property. Um, so in my mind, this application is also uh, conforms with the policies of the growth plan. And finally, just in terms of the township's official plan. So um, the township's official plan permits home industries within the rural land use designation. Um, but as you're probably aware by now, anytime someone wants to have a home industry in the rural designation, they have to submit a zoning by amendment application so that uh, staff and council can be satisfied that this particular home ministry will be appropriate. Um, and so for the reasons I spoke about earlier, no offsite noise impact, no offsite sort of um, you know, smells or scents, and you know, no real dust concerns off of the property, I feel that this uh, home ministry being uh, strong and custom woodworking uh, is entirely appropriate and meets the criteria of the township's official plan. So just to conclude, uh, the dwelling and the accessory building are permitted to be constructed on the property uh, within the Greenland zone. We're not asking for permission to build a, a garage. We're not asking for permission to build a house. You're allowed to do that. Um, and the township's rural land use design designation permits home industries. Um, so the zoning bylaw amendment to reiterate proposes um, to permit a home industry. Uh, and it pr proposes uh, site-specific performance standards related to height, size of the accessory dwelling, and also how much of the accessory uh, building, sorry, not dwelling, how much of the accessory building can be used for the home industry. So um, I believe this application is, is absolutely appropriate. I believe it meets the criteria of the township's official plan is supported by, planning, uh, by provincial planning policy. Um, that's it for me, and I'm happy to answer any of your questions, and I'll take us off screen share. Thank you, Josh. Does Township Senior Planner uh, Katie Mandeville have anything further to add to the materials and information presented by Josh? Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Uh, that was a great presentation by Mr. Morgan. So thank you very much for that, Josh. Um, the township staff doesn't have a lot to add. You'll see within the report, we basically agreed with Mr. Morgan's planning analysis provided. As Mr. Morgan did note, we as staff recommended that the rezoning be to a special Greenland zone rather than the rural residential zone. Um, in, in reality, that has really minimal impact. However, the intent of that Greenland zone is to leave the property in as much of a natural state as possible. So although it is within that field area or that you know, less dense uh, woodland or without outside of the wetland area, we still do want to leave that in mostly a, a predominant natural state with the exception of the approved development. Um, so that is primarily the reason why we uh, recommended the Greenlands exemption zone rather than the rural residential zone. Um, other than that, very little difference between those two proposals anyway. I did just want to point out as, as indicated within the staff report that the property will be subject to a site plan agreement that is required by our zoning bylaw and official plan that all home industries go through that site plan agreement process. So that will help to ensure, as Mr. Morgan outlined, that there's no storage outside, there's no other activities occurring beyond the scope of the application. And that's just a, a way that it's registered on title. Uh, should, should, for whatever reason, Mr. Strongman sell, the next property owner would also be bound by those same rules for the home industry. So it's a common practice here. And as council is aware, that site plan approval process is delegated to staff. Um, as this is a brand new build all around, it should be a, a relatively simple process for him to go through, so considering we've already gone through this rezoning process, or we will by that point. So I don't have anything else to add, but of course, I'm available to answer any questions. Thank you, Ms. Mandeville. Are there any persons present on Zoom or on the telephone who have either questions or comments on the application will now be invited to speak. Township staff will call upon each registered participant. Please unmute yourself when called upon and turn on your camera if you wish. 
You will be required to give your full name and address for the minutes. Please note that your comments will also be recorded and live streamed to the Township's YouTube channel and will remain online. The Township does have the ability to edit the live stream to remove any personal information provided in the course of submitting comments or questions. Madam Clerk, do we have anyone that would like to speak? Not that I'm aware of at this point in time. Councilor Brennan will get to you. Yep. I promise. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, going once, going twice, we have no one. Is there, are there any additional comments, uh, Ms. Mandeville? Uh, thank you, Your Worship. I should mention the County of Simcoe did provide an email uh, yesterday on this application. Uh, however, it just requests a copy of the decision and uh, reiterates, as Mr. Morgan said, that a home industry and a home occupation is permitted within the Greenlands designation. Uh, and they just encourage staff and the applicant to ensure through this process uh, that the natural heritage features on the remainder of the property were protected. Thank you. Okay, uh, the members of the committee have or council have any questions? I know, uh, Councillor Brennan, you have a question. Go ahead. Yes, through you, Mayor, to uh, to Katie, I, I have a question. I, I was really glad to hear Josh's comments about the 120 meter setback. Uh, I would just like to ask Katie, what process do you go through then in applications of this nature? to ensure the protection of critical natural heritage. Ms. Mandeville. Thank you through the mayor to Councillor Brennan. I will uh, just share a, a page out of the staff report just so we have that visual. Um, I will give all the credit here to, uh, to our planner Brad for making this map. So essentially the county GIS system that we all use, the public one, and as well as our internal one that staff have, we have the ability to, to show different layers on top of the map. So it's a little bit hard to see, but there is some hatching over this area. So that's what makes it a little bit darker than say this area over here. And that's the provincially significant wetland. Uh, there's also a, a, a mapped unevaluated wetland on uh, on some of the property and, and the neighboring properties. So that's this kind of uh, graphic here is the unevaluated wetland. So provincial land use policies uh, speak to 120 meters uh, from that PSW. So this green I don't know, blob, I guess, is what I would call it, but it's called a buffer in GIS terms. Um, so that that is marking the, the limits of 120 meters from the edge of this PSW line here. So the PSW line goes kind of around like this, and this buffer is, is matching that 120 meters from there. So as staff, we have to look at any applications for development within 120 meters of that mapped wetland. Um, under provincial policy, and then as well under the townships policy documents and uh, uh, generally accepted industry standards is to look at a buffer from the unevaluated wetland as well. So in this case, we're showing a 50 meter buffer and that's uh, again shown by this kind of yellow blob or if you want to say here. Um, so as you can see, the proposed accessory building is located outside of both of those buffers. So this is something we do as staff as well as Mr. Morgan would have done this similar kind of analysis in the background. And that's because all of the different planning documents, they do speak to protecting these natural heritage features. As council is aware, the growth plan in particular, you know, and the natural heritage mapping that's being contemplated by the county. So regardless of any of the natural heritage mapping debate that's currently going on, there's already protections in place in the county OP and the township OP, as well as the provincial documents, the provincial policy statement, as well as and the growth plan. Um, so this wetland is considered a, a key hydrological feature. It, it wouldn't need to be mapped by, by any kind of natural heritage system, the provincial or county one, um, in order for us to examine these protections in place. So um, in this situation, for example, say if, if the application was pertaining to something right in here, for sure, we would be asking for an environmental impact study. And more likely, actually, on top of that, we'd be asking why they couldn't build outside of that buffer. So, at, at, you know, least um, path of least resistance is always is always best, as, as Mr. Morgan mentioned, when you can build outside the buffer, if that's what you do. Um, however, as council is aware, there are certain properties in certain situations, for example, waterfront development, 
um, where we can't always achieve that buffer or that setback from uh, from the shoreline, for example, on waterfront properties. So certainly we look at all of that through this process. And uh, this attachment three to the staff report just kind of gives a graphic of that process. Um, now this process, I should say, only applies to Planning Act applications. So if someone was coming in for a building permit, the only thing that applies is our zoning bylaw. So anywhere that's zoned EP, obviously they cannot build and there's a setback from that environmental protection zoning in the bylaw. Um, but this wetland buffering only comes into play when someone asks for something above and beyond the zoning bylaw. So because we're here at a public meeting, it's a planning act application for a rezoning, we're looking at all these layers, uh, which if they just came in for a building permit, say they wanted to build a house right here and it's not zoned EP, you can see my cursor, um, they would be able to build that house there. So this only comes into effect when we look at a planning act application like a rezoning or a minor variance or a, a lot line adjustment of severance, things like that. So I think hopefully Councillor Brennan that, that answered your question, but if not, I can uh, try to help further. Thank you, Ms. Bill. How's that for an answer, uh, Councillor Brennan? Thank you, that, that more than answers my question. I appreciate the answer. Thank you. you Councillor Cox. You're muted, uh, Councillor Cox. Through the chair to Katie or Josh, <clears throat> I'm, I'm assuming the Strongman family realizes that they're on a, a provincial wetland, but I'm also wondering how do we ensure that there are no fertilizers or trails or anything are going to be made? Is that something we talk about in the site plan? Ms. Mandeville? Uh, through the mayor to Councillor Cox, uh, absolutely there there will be some wording in the site plan about that. Uh, we did recently on a different property, on a different proposal, have some conversations with our one of our environmental consultants and um, depending on the trail and how that trail is used, trails aren't necessarily uh, prohibited in a wetland. Um, you know, if there people are using that to further, you know, appreciate wetlands and advocate for wetlands, um, it's not necessarily a bad thing. So it depends kind of on the characteristics of the wetland. Um, but certainly there will be wording in the site plan agreement to ensure buildings and structures are set back from that and to provide that warning that the PSW is, is there. Uh, the other thing I should mention, which I think is in the planning report, when, uh, when we establish a zoning boundary, so this property, as Mr. Morgan illustrated, is only going to be rezoned at the front portion of the property. So where the zoning changes from the Greenland zone to the Greenland's exemption zone kind of acts like a lot line in that there's a zone buffer from that line or that, you know, that lot line, so to speak. Uh, it's not a lot line in this case, it's just a zone boundary, but there is a setback from that. So that also will further um, mean that they can't build anything or do anything right and just adjacent to that area. Um, but certainly the site plan agreement will speak to some of this as well. Well, it, sorry, supplemental. It's just that I worry that, you know, no offense. We all know that everybody has an ATV or wants an ATV or a, or a motorbike and that the strong winds may be fine, but will this be something that will be carried on that other people won't? Because it, that's important with a provincially significant wetland. Usually we just have, you know, a wetland or something, but uh, I just want to make sure that the people are going to protect that. And, you know, fertilizers on their lawns that could leach into it. So those are just issues that I want to make sure are covered. Thank you. Thank you. Any further comments? Councillor McIntyre. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Through you to Josh. Uh, further to uh, Councillor Cox's comments regarding the uh, wetlands and so on, um, is this building going to be, um, is it going to have a septic of its own and water of supply of its own, or is it going to be tied into the main house and building? Mr. Morgan. Sure, yeah, through Mayor Burkett to Councillor McIntyre. That's a heck of a good question, and I don't know the answer to that. Um, I. Uh, yeah, I don't know the answer to that. I mean, re realistically, though, if if the building will have a washroom, I mean the garage, if the garage will have a washroom, obviously, or if it will have water, it's going to need a septic bed. And of course, the septic bed is going to have to sit outside of the 120 meter setback, which it will because it's well removed from that limit. So I don't think that there's 
a concern ecologically, even if they do want to washroom and a septic bed, because we're so far back already from that 120 meter line. Sorry, I didn't know, but I'm really comfortable that it won't be problematic, even if they do want to washroom. Ms. Mandeville. Yes, um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, further to Mr. Morgan's comments, I did notice on the uh, locker rating plan that was submitted with the application, it appears to tie into the, or proposed to tie into the existing septic. Um, you can see the, the proposed garage workshop home industry here. Um, and then a proposed pump chamber is here and there's a line here, uh, septic force main which I think if we look over here, um, you can see that line here to the uh, septic of the dwelling. So that would of course have to be sized accordingly. Uh, but since the strongmans already have this whole drawing completed at the time of their building permit, I I'm sure they sized that septic accordingly. However, of course, we'll be looking at that during the, during the building permit review process. Thanks Thank for you. catching that, Katie. That was my job. Thank you, uh, Josh. Is that okay, Councillor McIntyre? Thank you. Any further comments? Madam Clerk? Yes. Okay, so your motion for this application reads that planning report number P22-029 dated August 10th, 2022, with respect to zoning bylaw amendment application file number Z2013 for the subject lands located at 3340 currently online be received and further that a draft zoning bylaw amendment be presented to council for consideration at the next available meeting subject to comments received prior to council's consideration of the zoning bylaw amendment including additional submissions from council the planning development committee members of the public circulated agencies and township departments thank you moving a seconder please moved by councillor stevens second by councillor brennan all in favor that is carried, thank you. So the next uh, public meeting, and I won't read the script again, but it's D2.3 and it's presentation from Victoria Lemieux, Morgan Planning Development Zoning Amendment Application 1948 Upper Big Shoot Road. Good morning and welcome. Good morning, Your Worship and members of council. Uh, I'm just gonna share my screen if the clerk is okay with, with that, thanks. So uh, we are back uh, in front of council this morning. Uh, members of council might recall, uh, we did initially speak about this property and this application back at the June Planning and Development Committee meeting. Uh, so uh, at that meeting, we had to, uh, in, in coordination with staff, we did uh, end up deferring the application to have another public meeting this morning in order to capture um, some existing uh, livestock on the property, as well as some minor uh, future permissions for the owners. So that's why we're back this morning. So I will be relatively brief in my comments, um, but obviously wanted to give an overview um, just to bring everyone back to speed since it has been since June. So as you can see here, this subject property is located on Upper Big Shoot Road, uh, just northeast of Coldwater. So uh, again, to reiterate the original purpose of the application uh, is to allow the construction of an accessory dwelling unit uh, within an accessory building uh, with a maximum footprint of 1,000 square feet or 93 square meters. Uh, the proposed accessory dwelling unit is to be located in the northwest portion of the subject lands, which will have its own septic and well. Um, and for anyone familiar with the property, uh, it is located or it is to be located uh, well far away from the from the road frankly it would be um it would be shocking if any neighboring property or uh, someone driving by would even be able to see it so we do believe it's very well located uh as well the application now uh in its revised form also seeks to recognize some existing livestock that has been on the property for a number of years as well as provide modest permissions for future expansion of livestock for their personal hobby farm that they have uh, so again, just to reiterate, the property is uh, approximately 2.79 hectares in total area, and it is currently developed with a rural residential dwelling, as well as some accessory structures and, of course, uh, their private and private well and septic systems. 
The surrounding lands are predominantly agricultural, along with some other rural residential lots as well. So here we have an aerial image of the subject property. And again, as you can see, the uh, primarily developed portion of the property is located along the frontage of Upper Big Shoe Road. So the property is currently zoned rural residential in the township's zoning bylaw and is also designated rural, as you can see here on the right of your screen, uh, within the township's official plan. So here's the overall zoning matrix of what the proposed development would achieve. Uh, so uh, again here, the primary uh, item of the zoning amendment that we did previously speak at uh, in front of the committee in June is to allow for this accessory dwelling to be located in an accessory building. But now we have also included uh, a, a very detailed uh, breakdown of what the farm operation would be permitted to have. Uh, most of these animals have existed on the property for many years, uh, really with some additional animals, uh, which are primarily the horses, a couple more chickens and rabbits, and I think two more turkey that the owners were hoping to potentially add uh, to their flock in the future. So here is the uh, overall concept plan for that proposed uh, accessory dwelling. And so I'll zoom in a bit further. So as you can see, um, as I mentioned before, the existing developed area is located along the frontage of Upper Big Shoot Road. And then the proposed secondary or accessory dwelling uh, is proposed to be located in this Northwest corner over here. And um, just to reiterate from our previous conversation, this proposed driveway uh, really is already used by the owners. Um, they they use it to you know bring over tractors and 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 to be able to access this area. So no vegetation will have to be removed in order to uh, accommodate this driveway. They're just going to be using the existing path that's already on the property. <clears throat> so we we took a look again at the planning policy in regards to this additional item uh, that we've added to the application, which is this livestock permission. So. We uh, do believe that um, after a review of both the provincial policy statement as well as the growth plan, that the revised zoning amendment does um, stay consistent with both of these documents. As well, considering that the property is uh, designated rural in the county's official plan as well, we do believe that the revised zoning amendment is also consistent with the county's official plan. And then most importantly, uh, looking at the townships official plan, it's important to note that the rural designation that currently applies to the property does permit agricultural uses, uh, which does include the raising of livestock. So uh, we wanted to make sure, of course, that the uh, revised zoning amendment application was also still consistent with the official plan, uh, and we do believe that it is. So in closing, just to reiterate, the resulting uh, zone, which would be a site-specific rural residential zone that would apply to the property, would one, permit the development of an accessory building to be utilized as an accessory dwelling unit, and two, it would recognize the existing livestock on the site, as well as um, a limited additional number of animals to be uh, added to the property in the future. We do believe that the revised application is consistent with all applicable planning policy, and we do believe that it is also further supported by updates to the Planning Act that do direct municipalities to uh, update their official plans to permit uh, these accessory or secondary dwelling units also within accessory buildings. So um, we uh, have worked uh, well with staff uh, so far. They've been really helpful through this process and uh, looking forward to any questions or comments that council might have. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mindeville. Do you have anything further to add? Oh, it's Emily. Go ahead, Emily. Good, Good morning, morning uh, Mayor Biquette and members of council. Um, I do have just some brief um, overview of the staff report to add on to Victoria's wonderful presentation this morning. Um, I'm just going to share my screen um, just to pull back up the applicant's site plan again, um, just to Kind of speak in detail to that. Um, so hopefully you can see my screen there now. 
Um, so as identified, the subject property is located along Upper Big Chute Road, just out of the Coldwater Settlement area. Um, the subject lands are quite large, about seven acres. Um, it does currently have that single detached dwelling and associated accessory structures. Um, as Victoria had mentioned, um, the subject property is well vegetated from the front and sides. Um, so the proposed location of this accessory building containing the accessory apartment would be well buffered from neighboring land uses. Um, so um, to briefly kind of summarize the proposal again, um, the applicants are seeking site specific permissions to construct a detached accessory apartment. And I've also updated to include that small scale agricultural operation since we've last had the application before um, committee and members of council. So I would emphasize that the uh, rural residential zone um, currently applied on the property already permits as of right the construction of both an attached accessory apartment and a detached accessory building. The applicants are simply seeking to transfer these permissions to that detached accessory building. The size of the um, accessory building is already permitted by the rural residential zone. Um, so again, just seeking to transfer those permissions from an attached accessory apartment to a detached accessory apartment. Um, and it would be adequately serviced by an on-site well and proposed septic system as indicated on the site plan here. So some notable higher level policy in this case would be the recent changes um, to the Planning Act through the Housing Action Plan, um, prioritizing these types of permissions um, for additional residential units and secondary um, structures. Um, the township does have some flexibility, um, however, it is staff's opinion that the property is large enough to accommodate the proposed structure and the servicing without upsetting that established rural and open character of the area and the rural designation. Again, that lot does have a lot of mature vegetation that would offer that natural buffer. And the property is completely surrounded by vacant um, farmed agricultural crown land um, to the sides and rear and with a um, agricultural with an associated residence uh, property across the road. Um, so from a local policy perspective, the property already has permissions to construct this accessory apartment as of right. The proposal is strictly seeking to transfer those permissions to a detached accessory building. Um, when looking at the additional agricultural proposed use of the land, it is consistent with the established character of this area and would complement the neighboring agricultural uses already established quite well. Um, it is permitted um, and prioritized in the rural land use designation of the township official plan, um, so there would be no issues of conflict there. Without getting too technical, um, I would just note that other applicable provincial policy through OMAFRA, um, such as the MDS, um, they're not calculated between uses on the same lot. So the proposed location of the accessory apartment relative to that agricultural use wouldn't result in any potential upset of policy that's applied on the lands. Um, and again, the province, because the neighboring properties are designated and currently used for agricultural purposes, as well as across the road, they're considered less sensitive in terms of establishing um, and recognizing an agricultural use. Uh, so it's not anticipated that should the applicants want to um, continue this agricultural operation on the property and construct associated um, accessory buildings for that agricultural use that they would face any challenges um, from applicable policy in the future. Um, overall, the proposal is consistent with the sort of established character of the area, um, and I would emphasize again that they're just seek strictly seeking to transfer the permissions for an accessory apartment to a detached accessory building, which are both already permitted. It's sort of just the form that those uses would take on that property that the zoning bylaw amendment would seek to address. The um, number of residential units on the property would still be restricted to two as permitted by the rural residential zone. Um, so given the large size of the property and for the reasons noted, um, staff don't have any objections uh, to the proposal and would support bringing forward a draft vote zoning bylaw amendment um, at the next available opportunity in front of council. Um, but that's all I have um, for to add on to Victoria's presentation this morning, um, but happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Emily. Now we'll uh, allow any persons that are present on Zoom. Madam Clerk, do we have anyone that would like to comment? I believe we have no members of the public attending today. Okay, thank you. Uh, Ms. Lemieux, would you like to add anything or, or summarize? Uh, thank you, Worship. Uh, just wanted to say thanks to 
uh, Emily for those additional comments and appreciate the staff report uh, that was provided to, to council and, and available for any questions. Thank you. Emily, anything extra to add or are you good? Uh, thank you, Your Worship. No, thanks. Thank you. Council, now are there any members of council? Councillor Taylor. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Um, <clears throat> I, I uh, support the application. This used to be a farm years ago and driving by there on the weekend, I doubt if you'll be able to see the new building from Upper Big Shoot Road. But I do have a question and whether it's really planning or not, but it, emergency vehicles to get to there, is that a concern for the township or, because that's, I'm just looking at the slide there and that's quite a hike to get in there and whether it's appropriate to bring that issue up or not. Emily. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Um, so the, as Victoria had mentioned during her presentation, um, the applicants proposed to use the existing um, entrance. So getting onto the property wouldn't anticipate it to be an issue. Um, the driveway would be constructed in accordance with the minimum size requirements um, by the township's uh, fire and emergency services. So they'd be required to maintain that area clear to ensure that there is adequate access for um, those emergency vehicles in the event that there is an emergency on the property. Thank you. Is that okay, Councillor Taylor? Yeah, I just wanted to make sure that uh, someone paid attention that we can get there and um, in in due in due time without uh, uh, any danger to our vehicles, and make sure they get there to to the the emergency that's required. Okay. Thank you. Any further comments, Madam Clerk? Do you have a motion? Thank you, everyone. I do. Uh, the motion reads that planning report number P22-030 dated August 10th, 2022 with respect to zoning bylaw amendment application uh, Z2205 for the subject property located at 1948 Upper Big Shoot Road be received and that a draft zoning bylaw amendment be presented to council for consideration at the next available meeting. Subject to comments received prior to council's consideration of the zoning bylaw amendment including additional submissions from the Planning and Development Committee members of the public, circulated agencies and township departments. Thank you. Mover and a seconder, please. Moved by Deputy Mayor Dunlop, second by Councillor Taylor. All in favor? That is carried. Thank you. Thanks Moving everyone. on, D, thank you. D3.3, presentation from Josh Morgan, Planning and Development, Rezoning Bylaw Amendment, Application 2783, Bay Road. I'll come back, Josh. Thank you. You'll notice a common format of the PowerPoint presentations today. Um, okay, so this one here, I'm gonna share my screen with your permission, Allison and Mayor Burkett. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay. Okay, so this zoning bylaw amendment application pertains to um, 2783 Bay Road. And I'll give you a bit of an overview of the property here. So um, actually, I like this slide better. So uh, the property is currently developed with an unserviced sleeping cabin. Um, looking back in my notes and at my planning justification report, uh, the sleeping cabin was constructed in the 1940s. So there's always been a place to sleep here but there uh, has never been a, a, a primary dwelling, like a proper house or, or, or cottage. That's coming in the next couple of years, but it's important just to mention that the property does have a sleeping cabin on it and has, and a dock, and has had a sleeping cabin on it and a dock uh, since the 1940s. The property has approximately 185 uh, meters of frontage onto Bay Road, which is this uh, well, Nature Wild Road comes in from uh, Irish Line, as you're probably aware. So um, turn west or east, sorry, on Nature Wild Road, and then it turns into Bay Road as it heads north. So the property has frontage onto Bay Road, which is a private road, and it also has about 50 meters of frontage onto McLean Lake. And the approximate area of the property is 2.8 hectares. Um, so in, in 2019, a consent application was approved, uh, which essentially altered the, the boundaries between the subject property and the adjacent property being 1762 Nature Wild Road. And there was a minor variance approved in 2019 as well. And uh, our company were the, uh, were the agents for those two applications. 
So uh, this is just uh, a, a highlight here of the subject property as illustrated on the reference plan from 2021. So um, to the zoning bylaw. So the property has a split zoning, as you can see in the image on the right hand side, the property has a split zoning of rural and SR3 or shoreline residential three. Um, and those uh, current zone boundaries, the rural and the SR3 zone, essentially reflect the previous lot fabric. Okay, so before, prior to the 2019 boundary adjustment, the lots looked like, if you can see my cursor, the lots looked like this and then like this. So in 2019, the boundary of the lots were adjusted so that 2783 Bay Road just has frontage onto Bay Road and the lake. Um, so we have this split zoning, which is essentially a carryover from the previous lot fabric. And the zoning bylaw amendment that you're here to consider today would replace this split zoning uh, and place the entire property in one congruent SR3 exception zone. Uh, and the reason why we're bringing this application forward is not just to clean up the mapping, it's because our clients and the applicants want, would like to construct a garage on the property, a 388 square foot garage, prior to constructing their primary dwelling. So they have this intention to build their primary dwelling uh, somewhere close to McLean Lake over here uh, in a couple of years, um, but they have historically had three sort of dilapidated sheds on the property just to store all their stuff because they enjoy the property in the summer and the fall and the spring um, and they use the sleeping cabin to sleep in but all of these sheds are kind of falling apart and they want to put up a proper garage and they would like to put up the proper garage before they build their dwelling so they can take all of their stuff that's kind of hanging around outside and just put it put it in one 400 square foot uh, garage. Um, but the zoning bylaw says that you can't build a garage until you build your primary residence. So that's why we're here. Because they want to build the garage now and then build their residence uh, in the future. Now, I don't think, I've had lots of people call, we've had lots of people call Morgan Planning asking if they can just build a garage on their property, their vacant property. And we always tell them they can't. And the difference between all of those other conversations that we've had and this one is that this property has always really been used as a resource-based recreational property because the sleeping cabin's been there since the 1940s, right? So the sort of like predominant use of the property has been established for, you know, for 60, 70 years, 80 years, I guess. Um, and so I, I think that what we're asking for is, is appropriate um, and is, is consistent really with the intent of this direction. Um, and really, truly, they're going to be building their new cottage here uh, in the next couple of years anyway. So, um, again, the purpose of the application is to permit the construction of a 36 square meter or 388 square foot garage prior to the construction of their primary dwelling. And the amendment would also recognize the presence of their historic dock. So this is just like our zone schedule that we submit with all of our applications. So the application seeks to rezone this little chunk, which is currently zoned rural, again, which is a carryover from the previous lot fabric, to the SR3 exception zone. And it seeks to rezone this other piece, which is currently zoned SR3, to the SR3 exception zone. So that would put the whole property in one congruent zone. So the township's official plan designates the entire property as shoreline residential. Uh, residential dowellings, resource-based re resource recreational dwellings, cottages, accessory buildings like garages, they're all permitted within the shoreline residential designation. So the uses that we're proposing here are already permitted by the official plan. Um, and when we consider the natural heritage policies of the township's official plan, the garage will be set back more than 150 meters from the lake. Um, so I don't believe that there's any concern related to natural heritage. Uh, the County of Simcoe's official plan designates the entire property and quite frankly most of the area around it as uh, rural. Uh, residential dwellings and resource-based recreational dwellings, cottages and garages are all permitted within the county's rural designation. So it's our opinion that the zoning bylaw conforms with the policies of the county's official plan. 
the PPS doesn't really dive very deep into garages, um, but just like in general terms, of course, we have to make sure that any development, uh, you know, is respectful of and uh, maintains the integrity of the natural heritage features. And based on the uh, setback being more than 150 meters from the lake, uh, I'm confident in saying that the natural heritage policies of the provincial policy statement have been adhered to. Similarly, the growth plan doesn't really speak about garages. Uh, it's more of a big picture policy document, but it does speak to natural heritage. And as I mentioned before, the garage will be set back more than 150 meters from the lake. So no concerns from a natural heritage perspective. And on that basis, I believe the application is consistent with the growth plan. Um, and so the township's official plan. So as I mentioned, the entire property is designated shoreline residential by the township's official plan, accessory buildings, cottages, dwellings, they're all permitted within the shoreline residential designation, provided that the character of the neighborhood is maintained and that the natural heritage features are protected. So uh, given that the sleeping cabin has existed on the property since the 1940s, thus establishing a long-term resource-based recreational use, um, and there have already been cabin, or sorry, um, sheds on the property storing a bunch of stuff, um, I think putting, taking those down and replacing it with a brand new garage to put all their stuff in is definitely consistent with the intent of the township's official plan. So um, based on our review of the township's OP, we feel the application is uh, consistent and conforms to its direction. Um, I, I think that I've made all the remarks that I need to make here. I'd be happy to answer any questions that uh, council or members of the public may have. Thank you. Thank you, Josh. Thank you. And I think maybe Brad, are you going to? You are. Good guess. Thanks, Brad. Thank you, Mayor Burkett. Good morning, Council. Uh, so, Mr. Morgan has already provided a uh, really well rounded introduction to the application, as well as a summary of the purpose and effect of this application. So, I won't repeat uh, all of that. Uh, however, I did just want to bring to Council's attention, as Josh had mentioned, uh, that these lands were previously the subject of a consent application to reconfigure the lot boundaries. Um, and through that application, uh, it was accepted that the lands did contain that legal non-conforming use, being the sleeping cabin present on the lands without a principal structure um, being a dwelling. Um, so this cabin was established on the lands uh, well before any zoning was in place in the township. So it predated um, any regulations of that nature, which qualifies it as legal non-conforming. Um, staff are recommending the, uh, that a provision be included to clarify the maximum size of the accessory building at 36 square meters um, or the 388 square feet as mentioned by Mr. Morgan. Um, so the applicant's agent is aware of that recommendation. Uh, so as noted within the staff report, given that historical resource-based recreational use of the lands, as well as the applicant's intention to construct a dwelling within the uh, next few years, uh, staff are generally uh, supportive of the application to rezone the lands to the site-specific uh, shoreline residential three zone, uh, subject to any comments that are received during today's public meeting. Uh, that's all I have. Uh, for now, but if there's any questions, uh, happy to uh, to answer. Thank you. Thank you, Brad. Uh, now, any persons present on Zoom or the telephone, Madam Clerk, that would like to speak? None that I'm aware of. Okay, Josh, would you do you have any other comments? No, no, thank you. Thank you. Brad, any other comments? Uh, we did receive uh, just a comment of no objections from the Public Works Department. Thank you. Um, council, any members of council that would like to speak? Councillor Taylor. Uh, yeah, I have a question with the, the dock there. Uh, how does it, how do we approve something there when, uh, do, does the township have a look at it and then does Trent Severn involved as well? Because I believe they're, they have a, a say with docks, et cetera. So how do we handle that one, Brad, through the mayor? Brad? Uh, through the mayor to Councillor Taylor. Uh, the dock is existing on the property, so it's been there for a number of years. Um, through this application, the applicant is just seeking to recognize um, that existing dock in its present location. If they were to come in in the future for any sort of um, repairs or alterations to that dock, uh, none of which are proposed through this application, 
Um, at that time, they would need to obtain a Trent Severn permit for it, um, as McLean Lake is under the jurisdiction of the Trent Severn Waterway. Deputy Mayor Dunlop. Are, are you, through the mayor, are you done, Councillor Taylor? Yes, I thank you. Thanks, Brad. Okay, thank you. Through the mayor. So I'm not opposed to this application. I think it's great if you're going to get rid of dilapidated buildings and clean up. I just have one concern. If they're going to get rid of the dilapidated um, buildings, I would assume, Josh, that they've had an outhouse. What's to stop them from moving into the garage, not going forward with a septic bed and making this a proper, I don't know, do we put a timeline on this that we agree with this as long as you have a cottage built within so many years? Could you help me with that, please? Josh? I'll do my best, yep. Yeah. Um, through Mayor Burkett to Councillor Dunlop. Um, they, I mean, I think when I originally reached out to the planning department about this one, it was in a naive way, I suppose, wondering if we could use the rezoning process to almost like establish a time frame for them to build so that the township could be satisfied like my clients uh, respond or conversations with me have always been we want to build within two years that's our intention we've got plans drawn up etc but we need this garage and I said okay well I need to have this conversation with planning staff so I did that and you know the conversation was hey how can we use the rezoning process to essentially like hold them to that timeline so that the township isn't just approving a garage that's just going to sit there forever and there's never a house and, I, and Brad or Katie, you can step in if I'm speaking out of turn here, but I think we kind of generally agreed that the zoning process doesn't really, you, you can't force someone to do something through, the, through a zoning, like you can't force someone to build at a certain timeline through the rezoning process. So, you know, there's a certain sort of level of trust that needs to be had here, I suppose. And that's when we kind of stepped back and thought about the fact that this cabin's been there for since the 1940s. So that sort of use has always been there. Um, there actually isn't a septic bed on the property. No. Um, they're, uh, you know, so they don't stay there for long periods of time. Um, they, they actually bring their water with them. I had this conversation with my client last week. Like, they bring their water with them to, uh, to wash dishes, basically. Um, so it's a pretty rudimentary operation they've got going on there, which is why they want to build a new cottage. So... I hope that that helps you with your concerns or questions. No, not really, Josh, sorry. So to continue, it's like, okay, so we allow them to get rid of the dilapidated buildings. Like, I'm not against this, because I think it's good that they're getting rid of old things, but then all of a sudden, um, the cabin that's been there since the 40s, then they move into the garage and they never continue on to build. It's just a concern that... Maybe Brad has an answer for you, Deputy Mayor Dunlop, but uh, Brad, go ahead. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, to uh, Councillor, sorry, Deputy Mayor Dunlop. Um, through the building permit application for the proposed detached garage, uh, staff would be reviewing that to ensure that it would not contain a dwelling unit or contain the facilities for that to be built as a dwelling unit in the future. Okay. Is that okay, Deputy Mayor Dunlop? Is that fine? Well, it, it does for the time being. Like they don't move their bunk beds in this year, but all of a sudden next year it's a full fledged sleeping cabin. And I know, like Josh says, you have to trust these people. We can't say, okay, you know, within two years that building has to be built. But I guess it is what it is, and we just we trust them. Miss Mandeville. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. I, I just wanted to add on to that. I had a, a similar conversation a few years ago with one of our lawyers where we were pretty sure someone was going to do something that they weren't allowed to do. And basically our lawyer said, you have to catch them once they do it. You can't, you can't do anything about a potential enforcement issue. You have to wait for it to become an enforcement issue and then tackle it then. Um, but as uh, Brad pointed out, we will be reviewing the building permit to look and see you know, does this look like a garage? Does this look like a dwelling unit? The cabin they have there is in pretty good shape, although it's rather old. It is a good and in good shape cabin. Our building department and myself, we have looked at it a few times over the years because of the previous applications on this property. Um, 
essentially what they're doing now is a legal form of camping, right? It, it would be no different than if someone was on the Crown land parcel directly next to this and, you know, staying in a tent and doing some, you know, basic dishes that people do when they're camping, right? So it, it's a very similar situation, except they have a cabin and it is a small sleeping cabin from the 1940s. It's not by any means a dwelling. Um, and they did have an outhouse that, that um, would be, uh, or is subject to our septic inspection program. This property, as we know, is on the water. So it would be every five years looked at from a septic point of view. So if, you know, in the future, they septic reinspect on this lake, which will be in four years from now, if the current system continues, because uh, they just did it last year. If there are any, you know, questionable looking things going on, that's how we would catch that. Thank you. And I'm not against this application. I think it's a good thing if you're cleaning up dilapidated buildings and moving forward. So I just was my concern that they moved in there. But like you said, if if we think that's going to happen, you check it in a year or two. That's that's all. Thanks for your answers. Any further comments from Council? Thank you, Josh, Brad, Katie. Madam Clerk, do you have a motion? I do. Motion reads that planning report number P22-028 dated August 10th, 2022 with respect to zoning bylaw amendment application file number C2208 for the subject lands located at 2783 Bay Road be received and further that a draft zoning bylaw amendment be presented to council for consideration at the next available meeting subject to comments received prior to council's consideration of the zoning bylaw amendment including additional submissions from Council, the Planning Development Committee members of the public circulated agencies and township departments. Thank you. Moving a seconder, please. Moved by Councillor Taylor, second by Councillor Cox. All in favor? That is carried. Thank you. No presentations or delegations. Moving on to the consent agenda. Would any members of Council like anything pulled? Councillor Cox. Yes, I would like um, F21 and F22, please. Okay, thank you. Any further ones pulled? Okay, Madam Clerk, do you have a motion? I do. So the motion reads that the agenda be adopted, including consent items with the exception of items number F2.1 and F2.2. Mover and a seconder, please. Moved by Councillor McIntyre, second by Councillor Stevens. All in favor? That is carried. Thank you. Moving on to H1, reports from officials, planning and development, planning report number P22027, redeeming bylaw application 3271 Crescent Bay Road. And who would like to speak to this? Brad, thank you. Thank you, Mayor Burkett. Um, so these lands, uh, as noted within the staff report, are comprised of two lots on a plan of subdivision and the applicant's lawyer has advised that each of those lots are separately conveyable at this time. Uh, meaning that the zoning provisions such as law coverage and setbacks apply to the boundaries of each law individually, uh, which uh, doesn't work for the app applicant's proposal, uh, which includes a dwelling that would span the, uh, the two lots. Um, so the Planning Act does allow for Council to pass a bylaw deeming um, all of the lands or part of the lands on a plan of subdivision to not be uh, a lot or part of a plan of subdivision uh, which would allow the two lots to merge into one consolidated parcel. Uh, MPAC already does assess the uh, two lots together, so we don't expect much of uh, an impact on taxation. Uh, however, the construction of a new dwelling, uh, as the applicant intends, would certainly change that assessment. Um, so planning staff are supportive of the application and recommend that the bylaw uh, be brought forward immediately as part of the general bylaws section of today's agenda. Thank you. Thank you, Brad. Any members of council have anything to say? Okay, Madam Clerk, do you have a motion? I do. Uh, the motion reads that planning report number P22-027 dated August 10th, 2022 with respect to a deeming bylaw application for the lands described as lots 21 and 22, plan 785 known municipally as 3271 Crescent Bay Road be received and that the deeming bylaw be brought forward immediately and further that the clerk be directed to provide a certified copy of the deeming bylaw to the clerk of the County of Simcoe per section 5026 of the Planning Act. Mover and a seconder, please. Moved by Councillor Stevens, second by Deputy Mayor Dunlop. All in favor? That is carried. Thank you. 
H2.1 administration report number A22-025 re enbridge gas distribution incorporated franchise agreement renewal A22-025. Who would like to speak to that? Madam Clerk. Thank you. Um, this is a fairly straightforward process. Um, it takes some time as we have to, with Enbridge, go to the Ontario Energy Board for the application. Um, part of this, as stated in the staff report, comes from the fact that one of our existing agreements uh, is soon to lapse, um, which is the one with consumer, uh, I think it's consumers, that's been absorbed into Enbridge at this point. Um, so they're just looking to sync the two existing agreements we have into one. And in order to do so, the report and first and second reading only of the proposed bylaws before you today. Um, and then at a future point, once the OEB approves the new application, which is a standardized Ontario wide application, um, then the bylaw will be brought back for third reading. Thank you. Any comments from Council? So, Madam Clerk, interesting. I don't know if this is the same gas company. You may want to converse with Derek. But we had a presentation a couple of years ago in Washago where there were 400 homes that were going to get provided gas coverage. And I don't know if it was Enbridge or the other gas company that was present, but they couldn't tell me where this new these new gas lines were going. Is it possible to maybe ask them as part of this agreement renewal if, if they know where? I can certainly ask them. There was a map attached to the staff report detailing their current coverage within the municipality i saw that but i don't think it showed uh but it doesn't kind of drill down to the street level so if you correct. know the particular street or area you're concerned about i can certainly inquire to them well it was in the washago area that's all we got it was in the washago area and and a couple of the mpps were there and and we were all in the dark as to which um whether it was going to be in romero or severin or where these new gas lines were going to be uh move to if we could maybe I, find out. I can certainly ask them. Thank you very much. A mover in a second. Or, oh, sorry, Madam Clerk, you need to read a motion. <laughs> One moment. Uh, yeah, certainly. The motion reads that administration report number A22-025 dated August 10th, 2022 regarding Enbridge Gas Distribution Inc. Franchise Agreement renewal be received and be it hereby resolved that this council approves the form of draft bylaw and franchise agreement attached here to and authorizes the submission thereof to the Ontario Energy Board for approval pursuant to the provisions of section nine of the Municipal Franchise Act. And two, this council requested the Ontario Energy Board make an order declaring and directing that the assent of the municipal electors to the attached draft bylaw and franchise agreement pertaining to the corporation of the Township of Severin is not necessary pursuant to the provisions of section nine bracket four of the municipal franchise act thank you mover and a seconder please moved by councillor brennan second by councillor mcintyre all in favor that is carried thank you new business we'll go back to councillor cox 2.1 i think you wanted to speak to yes thank you uh through the mayor um i really would like us to support this letter from Jody Lloyd, who is our uh, Simcoe County Board uh, representative and the chair of the Simcoe County Board. We have lost a lot of daycare spaces due to lack of staff and we need, we need them. And especially in the rural areas where people don't have a lot of before school and after school care. So I would ask that this council support um, this letter and send it to the Honorable Stephen Lecture. Thank you, any further comments? Do we need a motion for that, Madam Clerk, or can we go on to the next? We do need a motion? Yep, okay. I have it ready to go. That the correspondence from the Simcoe County District School Board <laughs> regarding concerns related to child care sector and the impact of on before and after school programs, BASP in Simcoe County be received, and that the Council of the Township of Severn support the Simcoe County District School Board's concerns and correspondence respecting before and after school programs, and that correspondence be sent to the Minister. Thank you, moved by Councillor Cox, second by Councillor Deputy Mayor Dunlop, all in favor? That is carried, thank you. 2.2, I think, Councillor Cox? Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would like us to also support this correspondence from the Township of the South Bruce Peninsula, uh, reposition recruitment and position shortage in Ontario. It's been on the news lately. Uh, 
there was art there are articles where there's actually people putting ads in the paper to find a doctor to write a prescription for them because they have no doctors and we need to support this and we need to get started on um fixing this physician shortage in ontario and i know our uh, physician recruitment committee in Aurelia, dr young has been on the news and he's also been in the pa paper saying the same thing like we are coming up to a, a very massive shortage in our area within the next year or so thank you any further comments madam clerk do you have a motion certainly your worship so the motion reads that the correspondence from the township of south bruce peninsula regarding physician shortage in ontario be received and that count the council for the township of severance supports the resolution of the township of south bruce peninsula respecting the shortage of physicians in ontario thank you moved by councillor cox second by councillor mcintyre all in favor that is carried thank you thank you very much thank you we don't have any new business We're moving on to general bylaws madam clerk uh, so two motions in here. So the first one reads that bylaws number 2022-44 to 2022-45 inclusive being or Hibbert read a first, second, and third time and finally passed. Mover and a seconder, please. Moved by Councillor Stevens, second by Deputy Mayor Dunlop. All in favor? That is carried. Thank you. Okay. Madam Clerk. Uh, thank you. Next motion is that bylaw number 2022-46 being is hereby read a first and second time only. Mover and a seconder, please. Moved by Councillor Stevens, second by Councillor Brennan. All in favor? That is carried. Thank you. Moving on to announcements. Any member of council have an announcement? Okay, I do. So I received the letter and it's addressed to myself as well as council. And it's regarding the July day Canada Day road closure. Now, is Mr. Burke still with us? Good morning, Derek. Good morning. The Washington Lions Club wishes to express their appreciation in the efforts and cooperation put forth by the township to allow the road closure for our Canada Day celebration that took place on July 1st. The entire day was a huge success in raising much needed funds for our organization. Special thanks to Derek Burke for going above and beyond and allowing our extension of time. Sincerely, Norm, Lion, Norm Mason. Thank you very much, Derek. Thank you. Closed session, we have none. Confirmation bylaw, Madam Clerk. Thank you. Uh, motion reads that bylaw number 2022-47 being is hereby ready for second, third time and finally passed. Mover and a seconder, please. Moved by Councillor Cox, second by Councillor Stevens. All in favor? Oh, that is carried, thank you. German, Madam Clerk. Thank you. Simple motion that this meeting be in is hereby now adjourned at 10.15 a.m. Mover and a seconder, please. Moved by Councillor Brennan, second by Councillor Cox. All in favor? That is carried. Thank you. Thank you very much, everyone. And Councillor Brennan, what